Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Full Spectrum Series. I am Nick Valentino. I'm an academic counselor in the Hagem Dean's office, and I am the host of the series. Uh, the Full Spectrum Series is composed of introductory lectures uh, from our Hagem faculty uh, and staff. Uh, this is an opportunity to ask faculty about their program, uh, their research, and the types of challenges uh, you know, engineers and applied scientists in their field work to solve. Uh, if you can't stay for the whole program, that's fine. These videos will live on the HM Facebook uh, account, on YouTube, and on Instagram. Uh, if you'd like a to win a prize, uh, you can put your name in the chat or uh, the Facebook broadcast and indicate if you are a current or a prospective student or staff, faculty, or any other part of the university community. Um, this uh, session is presented by Dr. Ajay Anand. Uh, Dr. Anand is the Associate Professor and uh, he serves as the Deputy Director of the Gergen Institute of Data Science. Uh, professor, let me know if I got any of that wrong. Um, and also, I'm going to turn this over to you. Great. Th thank you, Nick. Thank you so much. And hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, session of the Hagem Full Spectrum Seminar Series. Uh, very glad to present on data science. Um, just to add to the introduction that uh, Nick kindly provided, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a faculty here for the past few uh, four years at uh, University of Rochester. And before that, I was uh, working in industry. Um, so I'm an electrical engineer by training. Um, and, but early on, I've been very much uh, involved in data analysis and, and working with data to provide to make decisions and get insights uh, from an engineering perspective. Um, so very glad to represent data science in this uh, series. Um, joining me today is uh, uh, Lisa Altman. Uh, Lisa is an education program coordinator within the Data Science Institute. Um, I'll be talking more about the Data Science Institute, but just want to take a moment to uh, welcome Lisa as well. Uh, and so uh, thanks, Lisa, for joining today as well. Um, then we have a, 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 a few students from our program. So these are uh, your peers. Um, they have been in your shoes uh, not too long ago, so uh, we thought it would be great for you all to hear firsthand from, um, from students in our program. So um, at the end, after I finish the slides, um, we'll have a chance to um, meet the students and we'll have them um, talk about their experience and, and um, pro give you some thoughts as well. So let's, uh, on that note, let's get started with uh, sort of what, what we had planned in terms of uh, just providing an overview of data science and what the program is about and what the field in general is about. So, so we'll go down this agenda. So we'll start with just talking about what data science is. Um, there's a lot of buzz about the field uh, in, the, in the press, in the popular press and, and, um, and elsewhere as well. So we'll, we'll touch on that. We'll talk about what are the opportunities in data science. Um, so starting from that, we'll come uh, closer to home uh, on campus, how, how data science is practiced at UFR. Um, we'll talk about our, our, our structure, uh, where the program resides within the UFR. Uh, and then we'll go more into the details on the education side about the data science uh, curriculum. Uh, and then uh, I also want to provide you a flavor for the kind of opportunities that uh, data science students have to engage in research, um, um, be a part of the broader data science community, and also how we interact with industry um, within the program. And last but not the least, as I mentioned, uh, we'll, get a, we'll have a chance to hear firsthand from uh, the students in our program as well. So with that, uh, let's start uh, broadly and in terms of what is data science. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, data science creates a lot of buzz these days. It's a very popular topic. Um, and it's very timely. And so what is the motivation? Why, why is data science um, uh, having this bus today, right? So uh, let's start with the definition. So data science is really the application of, of novel methods and techniques that allows to uh, not only acquire large data sets, but also to synthesize them, to curate them, analyze them. And then more importantly, or most importantly, more impactful is, is gain insights or make decisions based on uh, what we learn from the data. So um, to, in the spirit of data science, what really makes this field unique, and it's, um, it's really the coming together of three, three key disciplines um, that have evolved over the last few years to make data science possible. And those are um, computer science, so the innovations that have happened in computing technology, in information technology, combined with all of the fundamental knowledge we have in math and statistics, um, 
that along with the domain from which the data originates. So, um, you know, we, we typically say in data science, um, there's not too much value you can get from the data if you don't understand the domain from which the data uh, originates. So, so when I say domain, it, I basically refer to the field where the data is created. So it can be healthcare, it can be finance, it can be business, economics, um, so on and so forth. So uh, really what data science sits at this unique intersection of these uh, three fields coming together. And what's interesting about this, this Venn diagram is um, two out of the three fields have always uh, created interdisciplinary fields. So for example, um, uh, in, in traditional research, you typically use uh, math and statistics combined with data that you acquire in a domain. Or in software development, you're embedding IT tools and technologies into a domain. Um, and also in, in, in areas within data science like machine learning, you combine math statistics with computer science. But um, what's, what's happened in the in times is this unique combination of all three of these uh, discrete fields. So uh, along with data science, you probably have heard a lot of buzz around uh, artificial intelligence. So we talk about AI a lot these days. Uh, and then within AI, we talk about machine learning, uh, deep learning. Uh, and so the a natural question that comes up is, uh, you know, how do, how do these terms relate to each other, right? So, um, so let's start with a, a few high level definitions just to explain these concepts. So broadly, artificial intelligence is this whole idea of making computers, making machines as intelligent or um, become closer, closer intelligence to humans, right? So, so um, the idea is, you know, can, can computers uh, perform smart tasks? Can they reason like humans? Um, can they achieve a level of intelligence just like humans, uh, humans have? Um, so quite frankly, we are, we're not at the level of complete, um, you know, complete general artificial intelligence at the level of human intelligence, but we are slowly marching towards making some strides um, in, in, in incremental. So the area that has really caught on in the last few years is the area of machine learning, right? So machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. And what it basically refers to is the use of uh, math and statistical tools so that computers and machines can learn from the data that they're provided. Um, so instead of laying out some rules uh, that computers typically have been very good at uh, executing, uh, the idea here is if I feed the computer enough data, large amounts of data, can it come up with some patterns and derive some insights from, from the data? And so that essentially is machine learning. Um, a subset of machine learning is, is deep learning. Um, deep learning is uh, primarily driven by a new technology called neural networks. So the idea here is to have um, uh, computers mimic the, the way the brain uh, processes information. So in, in the brain cells, we have neurons. The neurons convey information from one node to another. And so the idea is, can we use a similar paradigm uh, within computers uh, to be able to derive insights and, and make decisions. So that is uh, deep learning, which is again a subset of machine learning. Deep learning is, is, the, is the buzz that, uh, that has uh, created a revolution in recent times, especially with uh, self-driving cars, um, uh, you know, automated gaming and, and so on and so forth. So co combining all of this is where data science uh, plays a role, which is really to bring all of these uh, technologies together. So so uh, broadly, data science is this whole end-to-end -end process of working with data, implementing machine learning, implementing deep learning, um, deriving insights, and this end-to-end -end workflow starting from the data to, to the insight. So uh, um, uh, I like to you know, refer back uh, to this, um, this sort of um, Venn diagram on the, on the left, which uh, captures you know, how these different terms are, are related to each other. So we, we talked broadly about the definition of uh, data science. Uh, we looked at the different technologies. Um, and you know, if we have to look at the applications of data science, you know, we don't need to look too far. Um, it's all around us in our, in our uh, pretty much in our everyday life. So um, here are some, just some uh, very, um, very um, uh, popular examples of how data science is practiced. So on the top left is recommendation system. So this is uh, how you interact with tools like um, Netflix, Spotify, uh, the underlying technology on Amazon and so forth, where there are recommendation systems which are analyzing the user behavior. They're evaluating what, what you watch on Netflix, for example, or what you buy on Amazon. 
And if you know, uh, you may recall, many times these systems give you recommendations. They tell you, uh, based on what you watched, what you are likely to like or what you may enjoy watching. And those are essentially data science at play. Um, they're basically evaluating your preferences, they're evaluating your tastes, and then making recommendations based on the data that they're um, looking at. On the bottom left is, um, is, is the, um, the Google Assistants of the world, uh, or the Amazon Alexa and so forth. Um, so these are uh, analyzing your speech. Um, this is an area, very, um, very popular area within data science called natural language processing. And basically these uh, uh, speech assistants are able to uh, be a part of your day-to-day -day life. Um, on the top right is uh, something we encounter a lot uh, within email, which is uh, spam filtering or spam detection. Um, so this is again an application of data science where um, all of the data in, in your email is being analyzed uh, to determine if the if that particular email is a spam or, or not, and then it gets sorted out. So uh, hopefully re relieving you of uh, you know manually having to do that. And then the bottom right is uh, clearly a very emerging area of uh, self-driving cars. Um, this is really an amalgamation of multiple technologies in in computer vision, um, uh, speech processing, and so forth, um, where all of these sensors that are on the cars are being analyzed, the data from these sensors are analyzed in real time uh, to really help make driving uh, autonomous. So um, uh, here I wanted to just convey to you what, what a typical data science project looks like. Um, you know, many times uh, we are familiar with what an engineering project may look like you know, from start to end. Um, data science projects have a similar uh, structure. Um, Almost every data science problem, uh, sorry, project will start with a problem. This would be a business problem or a domain specific problem. Uh, in a healthcare setting, maybe a clinician would come forward with a problem saying, you know, I wish I could predict uh, this disease or so on and so forth from this data. So that essentially will kick off a data science project. So the key steps in a project are understanding what the problem is. Um, so this would involve uh, communicating uh, with the stakeholder, with the, with the, the domain expert. Um, then collecting the right kind of data. Sometimes you are given the data, sometimes you need to collect that data. Um, you then need to make sure the data is what, what exactly it's meant to be. Um, the data in the real world is often um, not, not as clean and ready for analysis as, as you would like it to be. So there are a number of steps, number of technologies that are used to um, make the data suitable for analysis. Um, visualization is a big part of, uh, any data science project. So this is uh, essentially graphics, plots, exploring the data and so forth. We get into the modeling. So this is where you're um, implementing machine learning, uh, deep learning models in order to um, uh, you know, take the data from what it is in the raw form to deriving some insights from it and then visualizing the results and conveying that to the, to the stakeholders. So as you can see, this is a sort of an end-to-end -end, uh, process. And um, a big part of data science is also effectively communicating with the stakeholders, interacting with a very interdisciplinary group of people, and, and then uh, communicating the insights that you're getting in a, in a very effective way. Many times when you think of data, um, we tend to think of just Excel spreadsheets and you know, maybe databases um, and so forth. Um, so spreadsheets, tables are, of course, a very common form of data. But more and more in the real world today, um, data takes on many other forms. So um, all of the audio data that's been collected, um, the data on YouTube, you know, audio and video, um, data on uh, platforms like Spotify, uh, images, uh, text, uh, social media, these are all um, you know, forms of data that are very much suited for data science. And so, um, you know, more and more increasingly, the data is not only structured, so it's not what it's uh, what's in spreadsheets and tables, but also unstructured, uh, which is becoming more and more uh, popular. So, uh, when we think of data science as a field um, that you know one wants to explore, you also want to look ahead to you know what are the opportunities. So, uh, we'll talk a little bit about you know what kind of careers uh, you could you could take um, with uh, training in data science. Um, quite frankly, the opportunities are endless, um, given, given the, um, you know, how, how popular data science has become in the recent years. So uh, typically, um, data science professionals, they take on positions um, uh, commonly called as data scientists. 
Um, so they, they basically will execute data science projects similar to what I showed on the, on the previous slide. But uh, depending on what exact aspect of data science you work with, uh, there are also many other roles like data engineer, data analyst, um, data science um, you know, management roles in data science, and also increasingly decision scientists where you're really making decisions based on data uh, for a business uh, scenario or business problem. So, um, you know, these roles are evolving. Um, I think when the field first started, data scientist was the most uh, common position, um, but these have clearly evolved in the last uh, couple of years. I, and given the popularity, um, this slide I mean, probably is not a surprise, given the popularity of, of data science, um, data science positions are, are growing very fast. Uh, it's actually rated as one of the top five jobs in America. Um, also, it's one of the high, highest paid and fastest growing jobs. And um, uh, here is just, just a code, uh, just a number um, based on some in, uh, survey that was done recently. Um, I just want to call attention that this is the median base salary. So the range is uh, definitely quite, quite uh, varied. And uh, probably as an as a entry level data scientist, um, this, the, the numbers will probably be on the low end of, of this range, uh, but, but clearly the field is booming and, and growing at a very rapid rate. So, you know, if you think, if you step back and see what's fueling this growth, right, um, it's really the massive amounts of data that are being acquired. And um, clearly the trend is for this to only keep increasing. And um, the impact really is from deriving the insights from the data and, and using that for uh, business decisions. So um, to, to meet this need and to uh, serve this demand, um, we believe our program here at the University of Rochester prepares you well for a career in data science. And our goal is really to, to provide you that training and then uh, help you succeed in, in these data science careers um, beyond graduation. So with that, uh, let's, let's uh, switch gears a little bit. So now I'll, um, I'll come closer to home and talk about how data science is practiced here at the University of Rochester and the structure we have uh, for our programs. So I'll start with uh, describing the Gergen Institute for Data Science, which is where our data science education programs reside. Uh, and then I'll, I'll give you a flavor for the types of research that are happening in data science uh, within the university. And then we'll go more uh, in detail uh, with the uh, data science education program, which is um, probably your uh, most interested in um, today in, in hearing more about. So um, here at UFR, um, the Gergen Institute is located in, in Wegmans Hall. Um, this is uh, located on the Hagem Quad. So we are quite centrally uh, located um, on, on their work campus. Um, the Gergen Institute ha has multiple, um, you know, has multiple activities um, catering to the different dimensions of data science. Um, so we have a number of uh, research initiatives and the goal there is really to play a, a leading role in data science research. Uh, tapping into the research strengths of the of the university, and then um, um, collaborating with faculty across multiple disciplines uh, who are working with uh, data science related topics. Um, we also have uh, we invest heavily in education, so we have an undergraduate program in data science as well as a graduate program in data science, and more recently we launched a certificate program in data science. And the goal here is to really to train students um, in in data science uh, skills and then uh, prepared them for careers in, in industry and, and academia and, and beyond school. Um, we also have uh, quite some initiatives around engaging with industry. Uh, I'll talk about that in, in just a moment. Uh, and these actually are integral to our education program as well. And then um, we also uh, believe in um, you know, um, being a part of the broader data science community. So we have a number of programs where we work with the, the local community, the regional community, in, in fostering uh, data science initiatives as well. So at its core within the Data Science Institute, um, we have a, a team of four. Um, uh, Professor Mujdat Chedin is the, is the director of the Institute. Um, he also holds a, a faculty appointment in electrical and computer engineering. Um, Lisa and myself are, are here today. Um, so they, uh, we are part of the Gergen Institute as well. And then we have uh, Sylvia who's our uh, administrative uh, assistant. Um, but beyond this core staff of four, uh, we actually tap into the expertise of faculty from across the university, um, across the di different colleges within the university. So we have 75 affiliated faculty uh, working in 30 departments across campus. 
And um, true to the spirit of data science, they work in different areas, uh, different domain areas, um, um, some, many of which are listed here. And you can see these encompass the whole spectrum of healthcare, economics, business, computer science, engineering, and so forth. And then more recently, um, the, the faculty have organized themselves into what we are calling working groups. So these are research working groups where they are um, collaborating more actively within the focus team. And, um, and these, these teams also, as you can see, uh, straddle the different areas of science, uh, arts, humanities, and so forth. Um, and the idea here is also to come up with new data science tools and techniques that can then be applied to these uh, different domains. And uh, within these uh, activities that faculty have, um, there's a lot of opportunities for students to engage. Um, so um, uh, research uh, experiences for students is a big part of this. And I'll actually touch on a couple of examples of that um, a little later as well. So now uh, let me take a moment to uh, go into um, describing some of the research initiatives. Um, so I won't probably won't have a chance to touch on all the areas, but I've selected a few um, that are um, that are quite widespread within the university. So the first is uh, basically health analytics and digital health. Um, so this is um, this is probably something that you know everyone can relate to with the prol proliferation of um, you know uh, variable sensors and so forth. So um, very commonly, we have Apple Watches and Fitbits today um, uh, in the, you know, that we are all um, are very used to. So these, as you can imagine, generate a vast amount of data, right? Uh, they generate data in the consumer space, uh, but they also have a lot of healthcare uh, um, implications. So, so the idea here is, you know, can we tap into these variable sensors, the data that's coming from these variable sensors, and can we derive insights into, into the health of a of a person, uh, can we provide feedback and, and so forth, um, not only in the, in the typical healthcare setting in hospitals and clinics, but also um, in the comfort of, of your home, right? So, so the whole idea of digital health, healthcare analytics uh, looks at that. Um, there are some examples of different sensors on the right here. On the top right um, are some healthcare apps um, that have been developed uh, in various research groups in the university. And these are, um, you know, commonly being, in, being deployed as well. Another area that's uh, very active within the university is um, is the area of uh, human computer interaction. So this is essentially where you have um, computer tools that are working uh, in many cases remotely with with uh, um, you know, humans and trying to derive various insights about human behavior. So I'll, I'll go into some couple of examples. And these, as you can imagine, also straddle different uh, use cases and disciplines. So on the top right, um, this is actually a healthcare application where the goal is to evaluate uh, patients who are uh, being screened for Parkinson's disease. Um, so in Parkinson's disease, um, what happens is the patient suffers some, some symptoms where their motor functions are, are impacted. So, um, what this tool does is basically uh, you have the patient um, essentially talking into this computer-based uh, tool, and the computer-based tool is evaluating the patient's uh, gestures, actions, the facial expressions, and coming up with a score um, to say whether um, you know there's any uh, there's, uh, this patient it could be suspected of Parkinson's disease or a progression within Parkinson's disease. So this would be a healthcare application. On the bottom left is a, is a tool to improve uh, public speaking for, for uh, people. So the idea here is the computer with, uh, with a camera and, and also analyzing your speech would make a determination on you know, how, how good your public speaking skills are. And again, this is a very key, um, as you can imagine, a very uh, key application of data science where all of the image data, the, the speech data is being analyzed and feedback, essentially the goal is to provide feedback to the person um, on how they could improve their, their uh, communication skills. So as you can imagine, um, you know, there are varied use cases and uh, um, these are also, um, you know, these can be done in a virtual uh, format. And so, um, you know, these are very accessible and, and that's the goal where data science is working in the background, but the goal is to provide that feedback uh, to, to the person. Another area that uh, touches on, uh, on various departments within the university, including the Eastman School of Music, is uh, this area of human multimedia interfaces. 
So what you see on the top is basically a computer that's being trained with machine learning and deep learning algorithms, which can actually create music. So uh, believe it or not, um, there's a component here where um, the human expert is providing some aspects of the notes, of the musical notes. Um, those are being trained on a, on a computer that has the, has the machine learning, the deep learning algorithms embedded. And basically the output from the system is, uh, you know, computer generated music. So um, really it's this, it's this amalgamation of, you know, human um, uh, inputs combined with um, algorithms running on the computer. In the middle panel here, this is essentially where you have uh, the computer um, based on how it's being trained with these algorithms using machine learning is giving feedback to a, a student who's uh, learning a new musical instrument. And the feedback is based on the finger movements. Uh, in this case, where play, the person is playing the violin, um, the computer is analyzing the movements uh, of uh, the finger movements while playing the violin and, and providing feedback um, on you know how how accurately the person is doing it, and maybe um, you know um, serve as an inst as a virtual instructor to provide to improve their performance. On the on the bottom left is a really a new area of uh, of deep learning, which is called um, you know data generation, where what essentially is happening is you you basically take a face and um, you know take an image. Um, the computer is trained on various images. And as you can see, you know, the, the same phase is being morphed to provide different expressions, right? So the middle panel actually shows fear, the bottom panel shows uh, happiness and, and so forth, so on and so forth. So different emotions coming um, based on computer, purely computer generated uh, data. Uh, another area that's uh, very much at the intersection with, uh, with engineering is, uh, is robotics. So as you can imagine, of course, a, robo a robot has a number of um, you know, mechanical components, um, circuits, uh, systems, electrical systems, and so forth. But a big part of that is also um, interpreting the data that the robot acquires and then making decisions based on the, on the data, right? So, so this is the whole area of uh, human-robot interaction, um, a lot of application areas in, in healthcare and also other, other areas. And then on the right, uh, these are a couple of um, healthcare related applications within a domain called uh, brain computer or brain machine interfaces, where what you're seeing here is uh, there are a number of uh, sensors or electrodes that are placed on the brain. Um, there are multiple electrodes. So these are measuring the brain activity. Um, so this is, as you can imagine, a very rich, large, vast data set. And these are being subject to the data science algorithms and techniques. Um, to really understand the uh, the brain signals and the and the workings uh, of the brain. So so this is again an active area of research. We have multiple faculty involved in this uh, within the university as well. So um, at this point, I've given you a glimpse of um, a couple of key research areas uh, within the university that very closely intersect with data science. Um, data science is an integral part of those, um, and also they bring in other domains. So you could see that you know none of those examples were. Um, you know, strictly data science or purely data science, they have to work in concert with their domain. And so, um, um, you know, that really brings forward the point that data science is truly uh, interdisciplinary. So uh, with that, let me, let me go further uh, into what our curriculum is and how that prepares you for um, a data science career. So I'll, I'll touch on some of the key aspects of the curriculum. Um, and so this is this slide basically we, uh, gives you a snapshot of the different areas that our data science curriculum focuses on. So um, true to the definition of data science, um, you know, coming into the program, uh, you're expected you know, to the, prerequis the prerequisites are in the area of calculus, uh, discrete mathematics. Um, you, know, you want to build up uh, your programming knowledge. So the prerequisite courses uh, help with that as well. And then you dive into a set of core classes that are uh, both in, in statistics, um, math, and also uh, computer science. So uh, listed in the middle here are the core classes. And then uh, on the right is you have a chance within our curriculum to specialize in an application area. So this is an area that you could choose based on interests you have, or maybe some research experience you gain. Um, and then you could say, you know, I want to, I want to specialize more about the application of data science in a 
in a couple of in, in a certain application area. So, so we, um, uh, over the years, we have identified a few areas that have uh, been very um, uh, attractive for, for combining with our data science courses. Um, and this list is our current list, and we continue to look at other application areas and, and grow this list as well. Um, and so um, based on this combination, you know, between the prereqs, the core closes, courses, and the application area, you have a chance to um, gain proficiency in the three axes, right, within data science, math, math and statistics, computer science, and the domain. And then finally, um, sort of a culminating course in our program is the capstone course, uh, which is really your chance to gain real world, uh, you know, experiential learning opportunities. So um, this is a course that I actually teach. Um, I've been teaching it for the last few semesters, and we actually collaborate with industry partners. Um, the industry provides you a data set, um, and a group of students uh, work on a given problem uh, in the course of a semester. I'll actually touch on that a little more uh, in, a, in a couple of slides. So uh, within our program, we actually have the option for you to um, either get a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science degree at the undergraduate level. And this pie chart on the bottom shows you the kind of the breakdown in a typical year. Um, most of our students go for the BS. Um, uh, one fourth of the students go for the BA uh, path. And what uh, differentiates the BS from the BA is uh, for the BS, you have to take a couple of additional courses. So uh, there's, a, um, there's two courses in math and then an additional elective that you need to take um, to demonstrate more of the proficiency within, within data science, which you get through the BS degree. Um, and then in addition to what I showed earlier in terms of the core data science classes, um, um, you know, within the framework of any program, any undergraduate program within the university, um, you also have to take uh, two clusters. Um, so for data science, uh, data science is a natural science major. So you would have to take a humanities cluster um, and the social cluster. Um, and then finally, um, communication is a big part of data science. So we have two courses uh, where you um, demonstrate expertise in, in writing skills. Uh, one of that is served by the capstone, and the other is um, another popular one is uh, writing to national identity. Uh, but there are a couple of other alternatives in this uh, as well. So coming to this culminating course, uh, which is the capstone course uh, that I briefly mentioned about. Um, so this is really a chance where uh, this is something students uh, typically take in their senior year, uh, either in the fall or, or in the spring. Um, this is an opportunity to work on a real world analytics project, a data science project. Um, from the program, we collaborate with uh, sponsoring organizations or companies. Um, we have worked with a very large number of uh, Rochester based companies. Uh, you see a list on the bottom right here. And increasingly, we are working also with uh, regional companies in New York State and also uh, more, more uh, you know, nationally as well. Um, so what, what happens in this uh, course is really, um, you know, group of, a team of students, typically three or four, uh, will be assigned a problem. Um, the problem originates from a, a, a department within a company. They provide the data set. So, you know, it would be a real world uh, data science problem. And then basically through the course of the semester, the students will uh, develop a data science solution and then uh, present the results back to the, to the company. Uh, and throughout the semester, they'll be engaging with uh, uh, people from the company as well. And over the last uh, couple of years, we have worked with a number of, like I said, local and national organizations. Um, they originate not only from industry, but also from government and also nonprofits as well. So um, here at the university, flexibility in how you plan your undergraduate uh, major. And that's true uh, even when you are uh, planning a data science uh, major. Um, so on that note, many of our students actually are dual majors. Um, so they actually combine data science with, with another discipline. Um, what you're seeing here are some of the most uh, popular um, combinations for the dual major. So uh, many of our students are, are uh, majoring in data science combined with financial economics or data science and business um, or data science and math. These are some of our most uh, popular ones. Um, and this has been a trend that's been steadily, um, you know, been steady over the last couple of years. Um, and I would say it's 50-50. Um, it's so half of our students are, are dual majors, 
um, and then um, uh, pursuing um, you know, dual majors uh, and then data science as well. So, um, you know, beyond the curriculum, uh, of course, you know, you have to go through the classes, you need to meet the requirements for, for the degree, but many of our students also use the opportunity to engage in research. So um, as I was giving you the glimpse of <clears throat> various research that faculty engage in, um, they also actively work with students. Uh, we have Office of Undergraduate Research, um, as well as from the department, we help uh, students identify research opportunities um, by basically making them aware of um, you know, opportunities that faculty may have. Um, so typically during the academic year, uh, students may work in a faculty member's research group. Um, they also have the opportunity to uh, apply to a NSF uh, National Science Foundation funded REU program. So REU stands for Research Experience for Undergraduates. We have a couple of undergrad, uh, we have a couple of REU programs on campus as well. And we also make students aware of um, um, REU programs at other universities. And then beyond these, um, you could also do um, research as an independent study. Um, so there's a specific course that you could take, uh, which basically is all about doing research uh, in, a, in a given semester. Um, we also have students who uh, pursue study abroad opportunities. So uh, once you are a declared sophomore, a junior, or, a, uh, or, or in the first year of your senior year, um, you could uh, embark on a study abroad uh, opportunity. So we have worked with a number of universities around the world uh, where students actually take data science courses and those uh, earn credit towards their um, uh, program requirement here at, at U of R. Again, provides you a, a, a chance to uh, expand your, uh, your learning. Um, and again, uh, beyond classes, um, you have an opportunity to engage on a number of uh, various um, sort of um, outreach activities on campus. So, so we have a, a number of student groups that are very active. Typically, they'll meet uh, one day a week, uh, maybe on a Friday, Friday afternoon, or a weekday evening. Um, we have the undergraduate data science councils. Um, many of these groups will organize um, uh, various collaborative activities. So it could be seminars, workshops. Um, we have a hackathon that's very popular among students. And then also um, uh, uh, groups of students, actually Lisa, Lisa has led many um, uh, uh, initiatives like this, where they attend the Grace Hopper celebration to celebrate women in, in computing and, and data science as well. So uh, while you're thinking about you know, a major in data science, education opportunity in data science and career in data science, uh, you may be wondering where, um, you know, where, what kind of career opportunities you can pursue. So over the past few years, uh, our program has been successful in placing students at, a, at, a various, uh, at various data science positions. So here's a glimpse of uh, where our students have gone on to. Um, uh, you know, notable are the big tech companies, which of course have, um, do a lot of data science related work. Uh, but beyond that, you know, data science is proliferating into a number of uh, domain areas, um, um, you know, across the board. And so you basically see a sampling of companies across uh, various domains, uh, as, as noted here. And the types of position they take also vary, um, all the way from data scientists to data engineering to machine learning engineering and, and so forth. Um, not everyone goes into industry after graduating with the undergraduate degree. Uh, many of our students choose to pursue a, a career in academia. Um, sorry, uh, uh, move on to graduate school, but eventually maybe uh, thinking of a career in academia. So, so many of the students go for a master's degree or a PhD degree uh, in, in um, you know, at so far or maybe other universities as well. And here is a glimpse of, of that. And then um, finally, you know, this discussion was mostly centered around the, um, the bachelor's degree, so the undergraduate degree in data science, uh, but we also have a master's degree in data science. Um, many of the uh, students who are in our uh, data science program at the master's level uh, actually come from an engineering background. So um, we value that a lot. Uh, engineering uh, majors uh, bring in a lot of um, you know, analytical uh, skills and, and critical thinking skills that are of great importance in data science. So, so you know, um, the reason I mentioned that is, you know, even if you choose a, a, a engineering degree now, engineering major now, or uh, any STEM degree now, um, those are great candidates to pursue a graduate degree in, in data science. Then, yeah, that essentially wraps up uh, um, 
you know, the, the slides that I had planned. Um, at this point, I would love to welcome our, our students. Um, we have three students here, so maybe we could take turns and um, have students uh, talk about their experience. They can first introduce themselves and, and talk about their experience. So maybe we'll, we'll start with Juni. Um, Um, just describing our experience and reflections, uh, that would be great. Hi, I'm Junie. I'm a senior in the class of 2022. I'm majoring in data science and in business. And I'm also involved with varsity field hockey and also um, Kappa Delta sorority. So those are my involvements on campus. And I'm also the peer advisor for the data science department. Um, and I guess when I first came into Rochester, I didn't know that I wanted to do data science. Um, and so I came in undecided, but later picked up business and data science because I thought that it would help me kind of open doors for multiple industries. And so that's why I chose those two majors. Great, thank you, Ginny. Um, next we have is Alex. Uh, Alex is a, is a senior in the data science program. So Alex, uh, go ahead. Yeah, um, hey, I'm Alex. I'm a class of 2022, uh, originally from Boston. But yeah, I'm a data science major. I'm concentrating in the computer science, mathematics, and statistics, which if you um, don't know, that's just sort of following the data science track and taking a couple extra supplemental classes in computer science or math um, to really sort of hammer home those, um, those three um, elements of data science that um, Professor Anand outlined. Uh, originally, I chose data science because I really liked how I was able to apply the computer science I was going to learn to different topics. I like how open um, data science leaves um, career paths and how you can apply it to any number of your passions. Um, and you know, throughout my major, I've learned a lot of theory and also practical skills. I would say it's a nice split 50-50. There's a lot of classes that teach about, um, you know, sort of fundamental topics in data science and all elements of the, the data pipeline, um, whether that's, you know, storing data, accessing data, um, modeling data and fitting data. So I, what I really like about this major is just how sort of broad it covers the topics in data science. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm planning on going to grad school next year. So I'll hopefully be able to continue the research that I've done in, um, in machine learning. And I've also done biomedical research. So I'm hoping to be able to continue, continue those things in the future. Alex, and turn it over to Wei. I know Wei just came back from a class, so thanks, Wei, for joining. Uh, so, Wei, please go ahead. Okay, hi everyone, and I'm Wei. I'm a data science and business analytics major, and my minor is digital media studies. And thank you, AJ and Lisa, for having me to this panel. I'm so excited. And so I am from China, and I'm a class of 2022. And I also involved in like schools sororities, which is Sigma Theta Zeta, and I also have been a D-line before. And the reason for me to choose data science is that uh, I went to a summer camp before I came to University of Rochester. And in that camp, I learned how we can use data to analyze like marketing stuff, as well as healthcare analysis, which we can pull out data and generate some insights from those like seeing random like patterns, et cetera. So I just found it, the things is so interesting and data science is at that year was really attractive to me. And especially because you have our have their uh, drug, uh, the drug Institute of Data Science. Uh, so I just feel like it is a great opportunity for me to come here and study in data science. And I never regretted my decision till now. Thank you, Wei, uh, appreciate that. Um... And I'll open the floor actually. Lisa, would you like to add something beyond the slides um, that are presented or? Yeah, I mean, one, one of the questions that, that 
uh, we feel is, is uh, effective for prospective students is that what do uh, either you or the students feel is the most uh, misunderstood part of data science? Sure, yeah, I, I can take that first and, you know, happy to have others uh, jump in too. So, um, you know, a lot of times uh, in, the, in the, you know, just, just in the term data science, a lot of emphasis goes on the word data. Uh, and the, in the impression is, you know, um, I, 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 you know, when I have all this data, I can just apply these algorithms and then it'll give me some results. And, and that's really what it is. But I think what's important to emphasize is this, uh, the whole aspect of science. You know, there's the science within data science, which is the whole, the whole, I, whole motivation there is you always have to start from the problem. You really need to understand, um, you know, closely what, what the problem that you're trying to solve is. Um, the data is a means of solving the problem. And so just like in any, any uh, analytic field or any engineering field um, or any scientific field, you know, the emphasis has to be, um, you know, what, what is the underlying problem you're trying to solve? And then let's use the best tool we have at our, at our disposal to be able to uh, address that problem. So, so you know, um, and this goes back to the scientific method, um, something that we practice uh, all along, uh, starting from high school. And so that is very much true within data science as well. And sometimes, you know, the hype of data, um, that underlying uh, message gets gets lost. So, yeah, and and just to add on to that, um, I actually had a recent conversation with Professor Anand about this. But there's this misconception that a lot of uh, data science is taking your raw data and applying a neural network to that, or applying any machine learning algorithm, and um, there's this idea of the 80-20 or 90-10 scheme where actually the majority of the data science pipeline goes into exploring the data and transforming it and extracting features and really understanding that business component of your data, um, um, which, which you know, speaks to what Professor Anand was saying about the science of data science rather than the data. And I think that that's something that's taken me, you know, a few years to realize is that we, we can't just apply a neural network to, you know, a gigantic data set to, um, to gather insights. We really have to sort of dig deep into what the data means, what its shape is, how it represents reality and, you know, abstraction processes such as these. So. I'd like to say a misconception um, that uh, some students have about entering data science is that you have had to have some experience in high school. You know, you've had to have uh, computing experience and programming experience. And many of our students have never even programmed before they got into college. So uh, data science at University of Rochester can happen uh, before you know, if you haven't done any programming before, it's part of the prerequisites to start some of the core classes. Um, same with calculus. You, you probably should enjoy math and programming, but it doesn't mean that you need experience before you come to college. Uh, that's, that's a great point, Lisa, and, and that's precisely where these courses come in. So coming into a course like Intro to Programming, as long as you have the interest in programming and you know you don't mind looking at code um, you know you you'll be well prepared by the time you finish these uh, prerequisite courses to to jump right into these core classes yeah just going off of that I completely agree I didn't start taking classes uh, for data science until sophomore fall and so I think that and I never took programming classes in high school. So it's definitely never too late. You can pick it up in college and um, you'll still be fine. So as an advisor, one of the things that we work with with first semester, first year students, and even with just prospective students in general, um, is that you know building up to this point of going to college, you know, your life has been about, you know, perfection, right? getting A's and getting the best grade and taking more classes and taking AP, AP classes. And then when you get to college, it sort of changed the rules a little bit. Can you talk about how failure is a part of data science, a part of the process uh, that you do? And not necessarily failing a course, but like the act of 
failing in your pursuit to find something. Absolutely, yeah, that's a great point, Nick. And actually, I'm going to go back to this uh, picture we had about the life cycle. Yeah, so um, yeah, actually, this is a great picture to to um, I think to describe that. And um, I didn't mention it when I when I first presented this slide, but there's a reason this is actually um, kind of in a circle. It's not a linear path. And the reason is many times when you're going down this path, you realize that actually each of these steps gives you some insights, which actually may make you go back and iterate on a couple of steps, a couple of previous steps. So, so yes, um, it is truly, truly an iterative process. And this is where the science comes in. Uh, you know, you learn, uh, you, you learn as you're going through these experiments or these experiences, and then you have to iterate to maybe improve certain parts of this, of this cycle in order to gain the insights and the result that you're looking for. So, um, so um, iteration, I, I like to call it iteration more than failure, but, but yes, uh, um, you know, the, the whole concept of uh, iterative thinking and, and improving um, as you move along is, is definitely an integral part of, um, of a data science project lifecycle and also the uh, uh, data scientist. Yeah, and I would also say in terms of specific classes and um, having trouble and sort of getting through boundaries with your individual classes, um, when you run code for many classes, it will fail a lot more than it succeeds. The first thousand times you run your project, it's not going to work until the very last time. So the whole idea of, um, you know, sort of perfection and coding is just it doesn't really exist and you're always trying to improve you're always you know finding bumps in the road getting through them um i think those steps four five and six are really um the most important with with sort of failing and repeating um because you you know you want to explore your data and engineer features and then predict but oftentimes that prediction step doesn't yield the results you want so you have to go back and explore the data again and this process can happen many many times um so yes, failure is definitely a big part of, you know, ultimately getting to your solution. Going off of what Alex said, I feel like, um, like the failing and just redoing, that's where you learn more about your data. And so I actually do like that because I feel like when you look at your data, there's just so much of it and it's sometimes kind of overwhelming. So just kind of taking it apart and like every time you fail, you learn a little bit more. And so I think that's, what's really interesting about data science and just, I guess, data analysis in general. Yeah, so to add um, uh, Junie's and Alex's points, I can add some real experience from my research experience before. So at one time I have to, I needed, needed to process some raw data from the US census. And actually there are over 100, not, not even 100, like hundreds of variables over there, but we need to pick like 10 or 20 variables that closely associated with their income of US families. And during that process, I tried many times to take into account different variables and clean them and then go to fit into the model until one result that seems reasonable, but keeping out like considering their standard errors, et cetera. And I think this process is what like uh, Alex mean, you have to optimize the whole process and try and try again until you find a good answer. So there is actually no, not a perfect answer, but there is always a better one. So uh, as we're recording this, we have about time for uh, one more question. Um, we, we get to have, you know, both Professor Nan and the students and, and Lisa make a prediction, if you'd like. Um, what do you predict is the next big wave in data science, what's the next big thing uh, that you would like to be a part of? So we could check in like five years and see if you're right. If you want, <laughs> if you want to keep the video for the lot. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think I think it's going to happen in multiple fronts. So I, maybe I'll pick my bet now on uh, self-driving cars. Right. So self-driving cars is still in its nascency, but I think the pace at which it's evolving is is really uh, uh, to a large extent, it's driven by data science. So I would love to see that that kind of maturing, and I think we'll we are we are getting there. I think we'll we'll, we'll have some form of self-driving cars on our roads uh, soon. So. Anybody else care to guess? 
<laughs> I, I also was curious about uh, Professor Anand's answer. That's a, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, self driving cars. I mean, I, I think that one of the things that's sort of upcoming with data science is just as you know, computing gets um, faster and faster, you're able to scale the um, these sort of data science models to smaller and smaller devices. So I think that machine learning on wearable devices is is a thing that will happen in the close future as um, you know processor size decreases. You're able to um, compute more heavily on smaller devices, and I think that that's sort of a wave of the future is this personalized machine learning and data science. Personally speaking, I feel like, um, like from also from a social perspective, maybe AI ethics might be also a focus in the next few years because I have also learned about in some in many of the algorithms we have been using actually discriminate a certain part of their uh, a certain group of people that are have been mini, like marginalized for years in our society, and I think that's a thing that as we develop have like more and more advanced algorithms and computing power, we should also shift our focus into those parts so that we can develop some policies and even like better algorithms to solve these problems in terms of ethics, yeah. Uh, personally, I think it like will just be applied anywhere. Like if we just look at a bunch of different, different industries right now, like even though um, people are allowed to work in office. Like everyone, a lot of people are still working online. Like a lot of things are being shifted to online and more, I guess, technology. And so I just think you would just see data science like in any industry and just like everywhere. Excellent, excellent. This gives me hope uh, for everything. I actually have to take a long car ride today. Uh, so the thought of self-driving cars being less out of its infancy makes me feel uh, hope that I will not have to endure such thing with screaming children in the background as well. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for, for coming and doing this. Um, this has been exceptionally helpful, especially for prospective students to sort of decode some of this at their own speed. Um, and so we really appreciate you all taking the time to come here uh, and to be able to share uh, your experience and your understanding of what uh, data science is and, and where it's going. Uh, so again, thank you on behalf of everybody that's been involved in this, we really appreciate it. Um, that actually concludes the full spectrum series. This was our last session. Um, we will be back again next year. Um, these videos will live on our Facebook page and YouTube and Instagram. Uh, so please feel free to watch them and share them. Um, on behalf of the Hagem Dean's office, uh, we'd like to thank you and we hope you have a uh, great weekend and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.